Hi there again. We are here with the She Word with this a fantastic mini series talking about financial freedoms, financial governance, financial relationships, money relationships. I'm here with Petra a little Mercer. You are here from J A Malta and Gemma and we're talking about these topics breaking down financial relationships, money relationships every single week. And today we are talking about the one that is probably the most uncomfortable for me and that is pension planning, planning for the future. Because as I mentioned to you before we even started this, I'm sort of a more of a financial Peter Pan. Yeah. I'm that person that still thinks I'm 25 years old and all of that will come to me one day and we'll worry about it when we get there. But from what I understand, I'm probably not alone. No. No. Um we <laughs> we in general we unfortunately start to think about retirement and pension planning when we hit our 40s i'm not alone <laughs> no you're not Thank alone goodness. <laughs> our mid 40s our early 50s where it's too late it's too late because we've missed a whole chunk of years of potential compounding Okay now when I'm talking about compound you're probably thinking oh compound interest right not really I'm no. not even not I'm not even at compound interest Petra so yes there's this the earlier you start okay putting um uh, your your money towards a private pension plan you're going to benefit from the effect from the effect of compounding interest which is basically your money is making more money your money okay. is working for itself but we don't start at the at the tender age of of 18 irrespective of how much it is to open up a private pension plan we just don't do it so we start thinking about these things when we're in our mid 40s early 50s and we've lost 20 30 years of making money you know and it's uh, it's it's ridiculous If you think about it, why weren't we taught about these things? Why didn't someone tell us, you know, or encourage us to do it? We would be it well, would be so much easier. That? Why didn't we think about it then? Well, because it's not it's not part of the education system also. We need to be taught about these things from a younger age. A younger age, I'm talking about primary, 6, 7. In a way, that kids understand that's a hard sell petra no. to a, to a kid or a teenager or even someone in their 20s or 30s or maybe early 40s it is a hard sell though isn't it because we're talking about something that's going to happen decades later yes. why on earth would i have thought about that now but the thing is listen we are more conscious okay about the way we're living we are healthier we're more aware of what we are putting inside our bodies we're fitter so we're living longer but when it comes to um uh, pension knowledge or retirement knowledge we don't think about that because are we going to live if, if we're going to retire at the age of 65 for example how how do we know how much longer we're going to live is it going to be 10 years it's been increasing over the number of years on average um a woman would live till the age of 85 that's 20 years so i've got three questions for you and i'm going to start off with a statement that this is possibly as we mentioned in one of the previous mm-hmm. mini shows this is possibly something that traditionally is left to the husband or the partner to deal with uh, it's it's more gen- and this is a very general term but it's usually something that that is thought about by the male counterpart in the relationship in the marriage and then of course times have changed women do quite often yeah. find themselves in a situation where they don't have that to fall back on so of course this is now very important for women to have this independently of anybody else in their lives this is a decision that women make for themselves so my questions for you are how on earth do you sell this to the the younger generation mm-hmm. Where do they go for information about this and is it really too late for me? <laughs> so let's start off with the first one, okay? When it comes to to kids, 
Yes, we need to start teaching them at a young age. So when they're six, seven, they're already at the psychological cognitive age where they can start understanding concepts. So when we're talking about concepts, we're not telling them, um, you know, in retirement, what it's about, but we're building up the stepping stones to understanding what money is, where money comes from, the value of money, and it continues as they continue to, to, to mature. But we do need to start at a younger age in order for them to understand ultimately where they would like to, to, to reach and what they need to do. When it comes to... Um, the second question the was... resources. Where, so we ah, know the resources, that, yes. Okay. We've got a, an 18-year-old who's started working and they know that they, she knows she needs to start thinking yes. about that. Where's she going to find out about it? So there's lots of information that they can find out on the, on the Gemma website, you know. So it's nicely broken down. Simple words, because that's a key thing. Okay. Um, to use simple uh, definitions. That's understandable by, by everyone. And uh, when it comes to the third question, are we too late for, let me join in, you know, for both of us? No, it's never too late. But our risk appetite, I don't know about you, but mine's changed from jumping out of planes when I was younger to, to now, you know. So you've got to look at, if you want to open a private pension plan, because you've understood that with your state pension, okay, there's a gap. And that gap isn't fulfilling the lifestyle that now you've become accustomed to. Okay, so what, what are you going to do? So you, first you need to understand what your state pension is, okay, because there are a lot of people, especially women, that don't know what that is. Then understand what the gap is, okay, okay and then you need to decide, right, what's my risk appetite? And if you've got to, if you have a financial advisor, it needs to be someone that you trust, okay? You need to shop around. Don't just stop at the first thing. Shop around, understand, prepare yourself, write the questions, where is my money going to go? What am I going to invest in it? Is your investment linking with your values? In a previous episode, we spoke about the environment, mm. okay? And that's important. Are you going to invest your money when it comes to, um, I don't know, petroleum, for example, when we're trying to mm. save the planet? Mm -hmm. So, again, the relationship, your values. Look at things which interest you, that you can take an interest um, uh, in investing in. But the financial advisor is key, and you need to have a very good relationship where he or she also understands you as a person, your, your lifestyle, your commitments, and can direct you accordingly. I'm going to make a deal with you. I'm going to go and get my financial advisor sorted out. If you'll come and jump out of a plane with me, you're not too oh, old, yes. love. <laughs>